Okay, in this video we'll look at something called arc length or how to use calculus to find the length of a segment of a curve. Now what I'd like to do is to find, here's a curve here, and I'd like to find the length of that curve between certain endpoints. So we'll go ahead and put some endpoints on there and it would look like this. So suppose I want to find the length of the line, uh, the length of the curve between A and B. And in that case it would look something like this. I'll just go ahead and draw it on. I want to start here at A and find the length of this curve and finish up here at B. Now the problem is this. I don't have a formula for a curve like that that will give me the length. So what I can do is rather than finding the trying to find the length of a curve uh, divided up into straight line segments and find the length of each of those straight line segments. So I will uh, divide it up and it will make it look something like this. If I start from here, and I think I'll use four little line segments to start with. So if I started from right here and went to here and then to here and to here and to here, that gives me four little line segments. Now I can't find a formula for the blue curve, but I can find a formula for the length of a straight line because the length of a straight line would just be uh, using the distance formula. So <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, go ahead and try to derive a formula for finding that. So let's try that. Okay, to start with, I need just a single line segment. So what I think I'll do is I'll go from here and we'll draw a single line, say, to right here. So here is a single straight line. Now, the length of a single straight line you can calculate. Um, let's assume we have some points here. So starting at this point and going to this point. Well, the location is this point. Let's just call it x1 and y1. Uh, this point right here will be the point x2 and y2. Now, what I'd like to do is use the distance formula to find the length of that line. Well, the distance formula you've had ever since algebra, what it's going to look like would be this. So, the length of a line, the overall length, would be nothing more than the square root of, and again, this is the same old algebra distance formula that you've always used, it's just going to be the change in x and the change in y. So x2 <clears throat> minus x1 squared plus y2 <clears throat> minus y1 squared. So that's nothing but the distance formula. Now that you can simplify if you wanted to. Let's just draw some straight lines across here. Suppose I went from here to here and then from here down to here. Then this distance right here would be delta x, so that's the change in x. This distance right here would be delta y, that's the change in y. So if I put this back in the formula, it would look like this. Uh, the length would be equal to, this again would be the square root of, and this just turns into delta x squared plus <coughs> delta y squared. So delta x squared plus delta y squared. <coughs> now what we're going to do is a little bit of uh, kind of algebra trickery here. I think what I'll do is put this, both of these in parentheses, and I'm going to multiply them by delta x squared over delta x squared. So inside the square root, I'll multiply it by delta x squared <coughs> over delta x squared. Now that's like multiplying by 1, so I really haven't changed anything. So what that's going to give me would be this. L would be equal to, and again I'll have the square root of, and I'm going to do the following. I'm going to distribute this. I'll take this delta x on the bottom and move it underneath these two. So what that will give me would be, um, it'll look like this. It'll be delta x squared plus delta y squared, and all I've done is take this and move it over to the bottom, so now it'll look like <clears throat> this. Then I'll have a delta x squared down here. And this delta x squared that's on top, I'll leave right where it is. So this is all going to be times delta x squared. So all you did there was just take the bottom and moved it over like that. 
Okay, well that will get you to the following. That's going to get you to L would be equal to the square root of, and now put each one of these individually over delta x squared. So this will become delta x squared over delta x squared plus then <clears throat> now you've got delta y squared over delta x squared. So this is a y right here. And again, the entire thing is times, and I think we're going to do a little algebra trick. Remember, you can take a single square root and split it up into two square roots. So I'll split this up, and I'll take this delta x squared here and put it under its own square root. So this will be times the square root of, and this will be delta x squared. So there's a little algebra trickery there. Okay, well what that's going to give you <coughs> would be, again, we've got a big square root here, so a square root of, and delta x squared divided by delta x squared just turns into a 1. Then you've got plus. <coughs> now, if you've got two things squared, you can put each one individually over delta x, and this is the entire thing squared. So delta y over delta x the entire thing squared. Now, the square root of something squared, these cancel out and just leave you with a delta x out here, so times delta x. Now, a little bit in the way of calculus here. Delta y over delta x, <coughs> remember that's the change in y over the change in x. Well, what that is, that will give you the slope of this line right here. Now, if you take the limit as delta x goes to 0, then the change in y over the change in x is nothing more than the derivative. So this will turn into the following. It will be the square root of, and you'd have this. This would be 1 plus, and remember, delta y divided by delta x, that's the rate at which it's changing, which is the derivative if you let the limit go to, of delta x go to 0. So this will become f prime of x. So that's nothing more than the derivative squared. And then you've got a delta x out here. Now what this is, this will give you the length of a single segment. If you were going to add all these together, well, like we went before, to sum them all up, you would have the integral. So the total length of this thing, the length is going to be equal to uh, the integral of this from a to b and again this is this part right here is a single line segment so uh, let the delta x go to zero take the limit and you'll have the integral of this will be the square root of one plus and this will become f prime of x squared. And again, <clears throat> delta x, if you let it take smaller and smaller values of x, just becomes dx. So what this gives you is a formula for arc length. So we'll put a little box around this thing. So there is a formula for finding the length, the entire length from a to b of this, and it's all based on a whole series of little short line segments. So you'll need the derivative as part of the formula. So with this in mind now, let's work a problem to show how this works. Okay, for our first problem, let's try this. f of x is equal to x to the 3 halves power, and we want to find the length of this function between 0 and 4. Now a reminder of what the formula looks like. The formula is just this. <clears throat> so the integral is square root of 1 plus the derivative squared with respect to x. Now the steps will go kind of as follows. Uh, as you use this thing, the first thing that you're going to need, you're going to need um, the derivative. So you're going to need the derivative here. So you might as well go ahead and find the derivative. So we'll call this step 1. So step 1 would be find f prime. So you got to You've got to have the derivative. So to find the derivative, just take the derivative of the original function. So that means that f prime would be equal to, and again, bring the 3 halves down in front, and you'll have x, and then take away 2 halves, so you'll have x to the 1 half. And that is the derivative. 
So now I'll go to step two. What step two is, is just take this derivative and plug it into this function. So the length would be, and we'll just put it in right here, the length of this thing would be equal to uh, the integral from, now in this case, a is 0 and b is 4. So we'll integrate it from 0 to 4 of the square root of, and this would be 1 plus, and then inside the parentheses, just put the derivative. Well, the derivative is 3 halves x to the 1 half, and then don't remember it's squared dx, so it looks like that. So what this is going to get you to would be the following. Uh, the length would be equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of, this would be 1 plus, and go ahead and square both of these. So what you want to do here is square the 3 halves and square the x. So when you square that, you will have 9 fourths. Now, multiply the exponents there, and you'll come up with x, and the whole thing would be dx. OK, now what this is going to amount to then, basically, it's just a big u substitution problem. I think I'll write it one with one more step in here. I'll let l be equal to the integral from 0 to 4 of, and I'll change this to the 1 half power. So that would be like having 1 plus 9 fourths x all to the 1 half power dx. So now it's just a matter of solving this integral. But this is going to require u substitution, remember, because it's not just a simple x. So using your u substitution techniques, we'll do the following. We'll let what's inside the parentheses be u. So let's go over here and we'll do this in, uh, we'll do this in blue, just so it kind of stands out a little bit. <clears throat> so to find the u substitution, this is going to be your u substitution over here. So the u sub. Uh, first of all, let u be equal to 1 plus 9 fourths x. So the derivative of that, if you took the derivative of u with respect to x, you would have, now again, this is going to be 0, and this will just turn into 9 fourths, and then that means that the differential of u, so du, would be equal to 9 fourths dx. Now, what I need, again, I'm going to look over here and I'll use the same techniques that we've used in previous videos, but I need to get rid of this dx. So in my use substitution, I'm trying to eliminate that. Well, I've got 9 fourths dx, so to solve for dx, I'll take the 9 fourths and move it over to this side. So I'll invert and multiply. This will become 4 ninths du would be equal to dx. So what that gives me is I needed a dx, and I've got a dx right here. So I can substitute it for this thing right here. So that's my u substitution using the same techniques that we've used in previous videos. So I'll change this and you know, let's put a little box around this u sub part here. So here is your u substitution right here. Okay, so now what that's going to be, let's go ahead and rewrite the thing. So this would be L is equal to I think I'll put it over here. Um, L is equal to, this will be the integral, and I'm going to change it into u to the 1 half, and then substitute dx for 4 ninths du. So this will become 4 ninths du. But I've still got one more thing I need to do. Let me just remind you, you've got to change the limits too. Uh, on this problem, these are the x limits, from x equal 0 to x equals 4. Well, what I want to do is to change it to u limits, so this is going to be u is equal to something to u is equal to something. So I have to change the limits. So let's go ahead and change, we'll change the limits right here. So these will be the new u limits. So when, and again, the same techniques that we've used in previous videos. So when x is equal to 4, u is equal to, and plug it into this right here. So this would be 1 plus 9 fourths times 4. And if you solve that, the fours would cancel out. 1 plus 9 would be 10. 
So this limit right here would be 10. Now, let's go ahead and find the bottom limit. So when x is equal to 0, then u is equal to 1 plus 9 fourths times 0, which will give you 1. So these will be your new limits. We'll put a little box around that one. So you've got to find the new limits also. So we'll put stick that in its own little box also. <clears throat> so you found the new limits. <coughs> well now, you've got the whole problem in terms of u, so it's just a matter of solving this integral. So let's go ahead and run through that. So first of all, the 4 ninths is a constant, so I'll go ahead and bring it to the outside. So the length would be equal to, and I can bring the 4 ninths to the outside, so I'll have 4 ninths times the integral from, and again this would go from 1 to 10, so from 1 to 10 of u to the 1 half du. And that would be equal to, so L would be equal to 4 ninths, um, and this will become u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, evaluated from 1 to 10. 1 to 10. Okay, continuing on, that gives you the length then would be equal to, now take the 2 thirds and invert and multiply it, that would be 4 ninths of 2 thirds of, and plug in the 10 and plug in the 1. So this would be 10 to the 3 halves power minus 1 to the 3 halves power. And what that will get you to would be 8 over 27 times, and this is just going to be 10 raised to the 3 halves power minus 1. And actually, this right here would be the exact answer. So the exact length of that line segment would be that right there. So that's what it would be if it was exact. Now, if you stuck that on your calculator and changed it into a decimal, this would turn into about 9.07. So what this would be, this would be the approximate length of it. And again, as far as the units go, uh, this would be inches or whatever your inches were on the scale. So let's kind of back up and look at the process one more time. Uh, the first thing to do is you need the derivative, so go ahead and find the derivative. So your very first step is find the derivative. Then take this derivative and plug it in to the formula. So plug it in right here. Then uh, use a little algebra spread problem out um, and simplify it as much as you can. Now at some point it's going to change into a u substitution problem because it's a composite function. So let u be equal to the 1 plus 9 fourths x. Do your u substitution over here and turn it into a u problem. But remember, you've also got to change the limits on the thing. So when you change the limits, uh, u is equal to 10. That one will go right there. Uh, u is equal to 1. This one will go right here. So change your limits. Now you've got the whole thing just in terms of u. Then it's just a matter of solving that integral, and you'll have the length of the line segment. And again, what that will give you, that'll be the length of the line segment uh, or that length of the curve between 0 and 4. So that's an example of arc length.